My name is uh, Jonas Kramer. I work as a cloud specialist for AC industry at Autodesk. And it is my uh, colleague Yves who will be the main presenter today. Good morning. And, bef and, and before we do uh, a few poll questions, maybe Yves, you can uh, introduce yourself. Yeah, so uh, my name is Yves Fellart. I'm a technical sales within Autodesk. I've been with uh, Autodesk for 13 years now. I live in Belgium. And uh, yeah, my main focus is um, data management, I would say. So anything that has to do with BIM 360 these days uh, is uh, what I'm focusing on. Yep, that's me. Fantastic. Let's uh, do some a few poll questions to, to the audience. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start with the first one, which is... So what, what industry, industry are, you? are you in? Okay. Okay, we've got 75% voted. Wow, 80% voted. That's cool. All right, it sort of stops here, I think. We're at 85%. So I'm going to close the poll. And those 85% have responded as follows. Hmm. Great. And uh, and uh, that's also what probably we expected. This is a very good <laughs> tool for, for, for the engineering. So that's, that's great. OK, Correct, let's yeah. uh, do another one. Sure. What is your role within your organization? All right, again, 75%. Good responses, 80%. All right, we're almost at 85%. So we're going to give this a couple more seconds. All right, this is sort of, uh, we're at 86%. I'm going to close the poll here. And let's have a look at the results. Mm -hmm. Interesting, there we go. thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take, take another one. Yeah. What digital tool or tools do you use to coordinate on design projects today? So you may select several here if you have yeah. several tools. Eighty percent voted. Give it a couple more seconds. Okay, let's uh, let's close the poll here. Interesting results, I have to say, uh, as you can see here. Actually, 16% do not have any tools. Hmm? Yeah, very interesting. Let's yeah. go for the last one uh, yeah. as well. Absolutely. So, how did you find out about this webinar? Okay, again at 86% here of responses. So let's close it down and share the results. Mm -hmm. Great, fantastic. And uh, thank, thank you all the audience for, for your response. Uh, so I will mute myself now, Yves, and uh, let's uh, crack on. And, and uh, yeah, the stage is yours, Yves. All right. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, for the next hour, um, we're going to be looking at obviously BIM 360 coordinate as the main uh, tool here today. Um, I do think that it requires a little bit of uh, an, uh, 
a positioning, if you will, into the whole BIM 360 portfolio. So we're doing, we're going to do a, a quick overview, as I've done in the last couple of webinars, just to get everyone on the same uh, level, if you will. So as I mentioned, we're then going to be looking at BIM 360 coordinates and also how it ties into Navisworks, for instance. Um, now, there is a bigger story here, which is sort of the planning stage and the planning phase before you actually go into construction. And so in that planning stage, there's also uh, room, I think, for assemble. So not sure how much we can talk about assemble today due to time limitations, but I'll try and fit it in. And in the end, we're going to have a QA. and a All right. So very briefly, as I've mentioned uh, the last couple of times during the BIM 360 design and the digital twin story, um, what we're um, looking at from an Autodesk point of view is get everyone on the same page, essentially. So it means that for all those different disciplines and all those different companies that work within the AEC industry, architecture, engineering, and construction, we want to make sure that they use a single source of truth and that we continuously enrich um, the model or models that we put into that single source of truth so essentially it's moving from this traditional workflow where we go from designer to engineer to contractor etc etc and we basically always dumb down the information and send it across people then pick this up and start enriching again no what we're trying to do is really follow this green line and continuously enrich that information so essentially that was also the story last time, uh, I think it was two weeks ago where we talked about digital twins. So essentially if you have in the end a very rich model where we've used asset tracking, where we've used uh, all of the different aspects of BIM 360, then we get a very intelligent model that we can report on, that we can hook up to sensors, et cetera, et cetera. So that's really the story of digital twin of um, two weeks ago. But as I mentioned at that time, there is really um, a piece uh, still missing, which is in pre-construction, which is sort of the constructability. Can we build it? How does clashing work, et cetera, et cetera, which is really the remit of, uh, of BIM 360 coordinate. But essentially, um, again, single source of truth, we do get our common data platform, which is BIM 360 docs uh, as the main uh, driver and vehicle, if you will, for all the information. And then depending on the discipline that you're working in, there might be some added uh, tools on top of that, such as BIM 360 design, but also BIM 360 coordinate and BIM 360 build. So um, over time, before the holidays with the BIM 360 design uh, webinars, and then after the summer holidays with Digital Twin, where I did uh, talk about BIM 360 build as well, uh, the only thing that sort of was missing was BIM 360 coordinate. Um, and there is quite a bit to talk about here, so that's why I kept it into a separate uh, webinar. Uh, so that's what we're going to be looking at uh, today. So BIM 360 coordinate, essentially, these are uh, things that we see around the business. So in general challenges, it essentially is, again, around communication, right? We've already talked a lot of times about BIM 360. Uh, one of the key aspects I keep saying and I keep repeating myself is indeed that large model viewer, which allows us to view just about any file without the original authoring tools such as Revit or AutoCAD or Civil 3D or even Bentley MicroStation or whatever. Um, but still, when it comes to collaboration between different disciplines, yes, we've seen BIM 360 design. Yes, we've seen packages. But what about uh, making sure that we don't have clashes, for instance? How do we make sure that we have communication between those different teams from that aspect? Um, how about missing project information? Do we have all the relevant information inside of the same location? That's also uh, very important. And then one of the last aspects is that um, coordination is indeed considered to be a specialized activity, not just from the discipline itself, where we have to understand how to filter uh, clashes, because if I just clash one model against another, I'm bound to find thousands of clashes. So you need to sort of filter out and understand what these clashes mean, but also because it is critical that we do coordination between different disciplines, it means that those coordinators um, were using different tools such as Navisworks, but uh, to make sure that we get all the information in the past, it meant uploading to, to FTP sites, uh, and essentially it meant um, having to understand the IT aspect around communication quite well actually so that's why uh, coordination is also considered a specialized activity 
So what we're doing is with BIM 360 coordinate, which again sits on top of BIM 360 docs, such as BIM 360 design is doing, such as BIM 360 built is doing, it essentially means that we can, um, in the cloud, make sure that we have democratized coordination. It essentially means anyone can have a look at um, those clashes and understand what is going on. It also means because we use the power of the cloud that we can configure um, automatic clash detection. So essentially it means we upload something to BIM 360 docs and it gets uh, clashed automatically. Um, issue control and version control. Uh, so it means that we can have issues on clashes and uh, maybe in the next version we've uh, solved that problem so those issues can be closed. And so essentially that's sort of what we're looking at from a BIM 360 coordinate point of view. Right. So automated clash detection, and we'll go through the, the, the actual tool in a second. It essentially means that we've got what we call a coordination space. We drop data into it and automatically we get the clashes. We get this nice matrix layout, which will help us understand how that clashing is working. So that's one aspect. We'll see all of this uh, in, in action in a second. So automatic clash detection. As I mentioned, democratized coordination, it isn't, um, any more about uh, having to understand how to upload. No, it, it is BIM 360 docs at the basis. We can actually, and I'll talk about a workflow which, which will leverage BIM 360 design actually, and the package is there, uh, but we can leverage that information right inside of um, BIM 360 coordinate. So essentially it means we have a design, we save it to the cloud, and we automatically get our clashes out of it. Um, we'll talk about that workflow in a second. And then model aggregation. One of the things that we can also do is that, well, obviously, if we want to clash elements uh, from, let's say, structural to HVAC and vice versa, or to electrical or whatever, it means that we have to bring those models and uh, that we have to be able to bring those models together. So one of the aspects of BIM 360 uh, coordinate is also that we can view different models in context of one another. All right, so um, last thing is obviously when we find clashes, we need to be able to do, uh, to create issues on them. And that's sort of what is happening here as well. So once we find a clash, we can say, right, let's uh, create an issue. And the most important thing here is that uh, if you saw the previous presentations on BIM 360 design, where we can approve packages or we can send packages back, we can create issues on those. We can create issues in one file. We can create issues in BIM 360 coordinate, they all end up in the same place, which is BIM 360 docs, essentially. So we can start reporting on them, we can start pulling out information from them, et cetera, et cetera. So that's sort of uh, uh, what I wanna highlight from a PowerPoint uh, point of view um, for BIM 360 coordinate. So let's, uh, let's dive into the actual environment. So I've got my BIM 360 coordinate open here. Actually, it is, of course, BIM 360 document management uh, at the basis. And again, what you'll notice maybe if you followed the other webinars is that I'm in still the very same environment, still the very same BIM 360 docs project, which is BIM 360 FY21. And so again, to reiterate the fact that this is indeed a single source of truth, when we talk about BIM 360 design, we talk about these folders here where we have our architectural um, um, project, our MEP project, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what we have here is what we call a coordination space in BIM 360 coordinates. So I've mentioned this in the previous webinars as well. We're looking at our single source of truth from a document management point of view here, but we can also sort of filter our information based upon what we're looking for. So for instance, assets, assets which I um, spent a bit of time on last time, uh, cost management, for instance. So there are ways of filtering this information. Amongst other things, there is this model coordination aspect, which I'll dive into in a second. And essentially, the only thing we need to do is tell um, BIM 360 uh, where my coordination spaces are. And in this case, I've created my aggregated folder here. And what you'll notice is it says here master.rvt. One file is in my aggregation space. So just to go into my configuration here, just to show you that this is indeed how we set this up. It's actually quite simple to do. We go into our project admin, we go into model coordination. Did 
just bear with me for a second. There we go, model coordination. And so quite simply, it says here aggregated project files coordination aggregated is the folder. Now you'll also notice that this button doesn't ne isn't necessarily grayed out because we have an uh, uh, coordination space. We can have as many coordination spaces as we see fit. And a coordination space is nothing more than a location that BIM 360 is going to use to clash elements against one another. Okay. So what does that mean? It means that we can have aggregated clashes between the different disciplines. We can also set up a coordination space for each and every one of the individual disciplines. So before they hand data over according to BIM 360 design and create a package, they could actually run a clash test uh, just within architectural. Maybe it's multiple buildings. Maybe we split it out between different architects, you know, and maybe we want to understand whether there is no coordination issues just from an architectural point of view or from a structural point of view, et cetera, et cetera. So we can have as many coordination spaces here as we see fit. Uh, in this case, again, kept it simple. I've got one aggregation space, which is going to uh, account for um, a combination of all the different um, disciplines. Okay, so let's go back into document management. And uh, just to reiterate, we're in coordination aggregated. And again, what you'll notice is that it says here master.rvt, one Revit file. So how can we clash elements from a Revit file? Well, actually what we're doing here is that we're gonna be looking at views that we created inside of this file. So let's just, before we go into clashing, let's just have a look at what it is that we have here. So inside of my master file, I have different views. So architectural, electrical, HVAC, etc., etc. right? So essentially, that means that if I now move over to my model coordination, it's going to tell me that there is indeed just a one file, master.rvt, but it has multiple views. And so we're looking at this from the model coordination aspect, if you will. So I can now say, okay, first of all, before we go into clashes or anything, let's just have a look at maybe the HVAC system. Okay, so nothing special. This is what I've just shown you in BIM 360 Docs itself. This is indeed the HVAC system, right? So that's what we have in the building. Uh, the difference is that I can now say add remove models and I can now say, okay, I want to have sanitary as well so you'll see that it now says i'm loading two models and there's my sanitary and i got again all the richness of this viewer is still there you know if i want to understand what this is i can still go into the properties and it's going to tell me this is a rectangular duck it's got all the information from um revit inside uh and that's what we see here okay um so yeah we've got HVAC, we've got sanitary. Let's just uh, continue to move uh, to, to add some stuff. So maybe the electrical bits and pieces. So let's have a look at that. So we now have the lighting fixtures. We've got the electrical sockets, etc., etc. And we can continue to move on. Maybe I want to see the landscaping now. No, nope. let's uh, first do structural. Select. There we go. So now we've got floors. Actually, floor slabs. Okay. Whoops. There we go. And uh, let's just continue, you know, so I want to have the landscaping, select, okay. So here's my terrain now. And finally, I'm going to add architectural. So those are just, you know, views. And let's just go out here for a second. There we go. So these are just views, you know, this is one Revit file, different views, and we're looking at this in a combination. Okay, so that's uh, that's the first aspect. And what we can do now is, well, we've got all those different uh, models, so we can clash them. And actually, this is happening automatically, right? So uh, we can actually go in here and say, look, we've got our clashes, and what we're looking at is a matrix of each and every one of the um, views clashed against one another so architectural versus architectural well that's not gonna tell us much because that's going to be everything right so on the axis here if you will on the on the, on the central axis uh it's the 
view against itself. So that's why we don't have anything in here. So architectural versus electrical, for instance, gives us 62 groups of clashes. And I do want to specify groups of clashes. I'll explain that in a second. Um, architectural versus HVACs, HVAC 134, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it's it's also color coding. So the more orange and the more uh, red it turns, that's uh, where we really should be focusing on maybe. So architectural versus structural is giving us uh, 1,488 uh, clashes, groups of clashes, I should say. Right. So let's uh, let's focus on something here. So what you'll see is that um, maybe. Um, You've noticed that if I clash HVAC versus electrical, for instance, it gives me a result. But obviously, at the other side of the axis, electrical versus HVAC, HVAC should give me the same result, right? HVAC versus electrical, five. Electrical versus HVAC, four. So that's not really in line, right? So what's happening here? Well, essentially, and this is where the grouping comes in because it tells me there's four uh, clash groups and here are five clash groups so let's keep this very simple let's say i'm going to clash a very basic um, architectural model versus a very basic structural model let's say that i have two structural beams and one um, architectural wall and let's say the beams uh, span beyond the architectural wall so what we're looking at here is that this is the discipline that should take care of the problem this is the dust discipline it clashes with. So essentially, if I look at, let's say, structural versus architectural in my example, it essentially means that if I have one wall and two structural beams, that from a structural point of view, I have two problems because I have to solve two beams. However, from an architectural point of view, I have one wall which has two clashes with structural beams. So if I look at this from the structural point of view, I need to solve two beams. If I look at this from the architectural point of view, I need to solve one wall, if you will. So that's where this difference comes in. Even though we're looking at the same clashes, we could actually re reason that from an HVAC point of view, I've got five elements to solve. From an electrical point of view, I've got four elements to solve. So let's let's have a look at that, right? So let's click on this. So it's going to bring us to those elements and it's going to say, aha, uh -huh, there's six clashes, six clashes. But from, again, an HVAC point of view, I'm looking at five groups, which essentially means I've got my one problem here, which is that one. I've got my one problem over there. I've got my one problem sitting over there. One problem again over there. And I've got two problems over here. See? So that's how this is working. Now, what you'll notice, and this has been added like this week, what you see here is that we've got our elements in context of one another, right? So uh, HVAC versus electrical, and that's it. Now, maybe I wanna see the rest of the model, right? So what I can do is I can go back into my models here, and I can say, you know what? I wanna have all of, let's not take landscaping here, but let's uh, let's focus on the rest here. So I've just added everything. If I go back to my clashes, I can now say, okay, HVAC, that's fine. And it's gonna clash now with all four models. So it's now in the matrix. It's now taking multiple columns together. We've got 1,118 clashes across everything. Now, maybe what I wanna do is still just focus on the electrical bits and pieces. So what we have now is again, those six clashes, but now in context of the architectural model, et cetera, et cetera. And so from this point on, it's quite simple to say, I wanna create an issue on this one. It's gonna create a screenshot. We can assign it to someone, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you'll see that uh, in a second. Now, the other aspect is that we can also uh, sort of um, get our elements sorted by a certain group. So in this case, we're just looking at objects. We can also say, okay, in the case of HVAC, HVAC I want to understand this from a systems point of view. So the mechanical exhaust air, air has three um, problems with the cable tray, as you can see here, right? And again, we can create issues on that. Right. 
so okay i've got my views i can look at the clashes so let's go back to my clashes here for a second um this is as i uh, as you can see here this is pretty flexible because i could say i want to search for models maybe you know landscaping what's the point of having landscaping clash with like a pipe that will run into the ground you know so maybe i just want to get rid of landscaping so what i can do is just remove this here and we now get a matrix of five by five landscaping is out of the picture so very flexible to actually um go in and say look i want to i want to uh, understand clashes between certain views if you will certain models Okay, so back to basics. So we've we've got our coordination space. We've set that up. It's a folder. We've dropped the file into it, and essentially we're looking at the results here, right? So there's still this piece missing in between, right? So how do we get a file in here? Uh, we've already looked at BIM 360 design in the past. So is there maybe a collaboration, if you will, between BIM 360 design and BIM 360 coordinate? Well, let's go back to document management here. And again, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on BIM 360 design here, but essentially what we have is all of the different disciplines, they upload their model into their own work in progress environment. And at some point in time, they're going to create a package. And that's what we see in shared, where we have the architectural model, the landscaping model, et cetera, et cetera. So how does this relate those folders design and um, shared to something that is completely different, which is coordination. Well, what I've done is, in this case, is what you see here, actually, this file, master.rvt, I've got it open here inside of um, Revit. So what you'll see is it says here, master.rvt. This is a cloud model. So it's actually not a work shared model. It could be a work shared model, but this is not a cloud model. This is just a, uh, sorry, this is not a work shared model. This is a basic uh, cloud model. So you actually don't need BIM 360 design for this. You can just use Revit and the connection to BIM 360 docs. It will still use those benefits of, um, of Delta transfers and everything. But essentially what I've done here is I've used save as and then cloud model, and then put it into BIM 360 in very specifically this folder, right? So it sits in EMEA TS BIM 360 FY21, project files, coordination, aggregated, that's this file. Now, the question is, what did I upload here? So what you'll see is that I've got my different views. Those are the views that we do have inside of BIM 360 coordinate. But what you'll also notice is I don't really have any elements in here. This actually is a link, okay? So just to illustrate this, let's just quickly create a new view here, 3D view, there we go. So we've got everything here. Let's just fine tune this a little bit. Consistent colors, there we go. And I'll go in. And uh, we've got everything activated here. Let's just select all and activate everything, right? So I've got all elements visible in this uh, view, right? So what happens if I now select everything here and we go and filter this? Well, obviously in Revit, we also always have levels, but the only thing it shows here is links, Revit links for Revit links, which corresponds to this. And guess what? Office architecture, existing buildings, MEP structural is exactly what we see in here. And guess what? It tells me that office architecture is the one that I've linked from BIM 360, FY21, project files. Guess what? Shared architectural, shared landscaping. So essentially in here, what I've done is this file is an empty file. It just links in the information from this location, architectural, landscaping, MEP structural. So what does that mean? It essentially means that from BIM 360 design, we get a new version, hit save to central, publish the file, create a package. That package goes into shared. Those other disciplines, before they accept the package, they can actually just walk in here, look at master.rvt, understand the clashing, and see if it's all relevant to them. Okay, so that's uh, that's what we have here. Right, so the other aspect is that uh, we can create issues, right? So we find a clash. So let's have a look at our issues here. 
And so immediately what you'll see is that this one, master.rvt, it says here, clash with cable tray. Uh, it sits in document management. And this is very important because it means that we can actually look at this file in BIM 360 docs without a coordination module attached to it. It also means that we're going to be looking at this file from a BIM 360 docs point of view, from a who's responsible for this point of view. And remember that in coordinate, we had a master file, if you will, sorry, we had a view that we looked from and we clashed it against other disciplines. So essentially, the issue is being assigned to the view that we want to assign to a, a discipline. So essentially, what we have here is that we look at this from the HVAC point of view. This is the guy that needs to resolve it. Now, obviously, we don't really see the cable tray that's clashing because, again, this is basic BIM 360 docs. We do have automatically an attachment here, and it's going to tell me we could actually um, put some markups in there as well. Um, but essentially, this is uh, what we're looking at. So this is automatically attached to my issue. Okay, and so we can uh, look at this. We can open the Revit file. We can pretty much... Uh, try and solve this problem. Now, I did mention that we also have this uh, collaboration, if you will, <clears throat> with Navisworks. Because what I tend to, ha to have is, let, let's uh, answer a couple of questions that I tend to get here. Um, one is, how do you um, get to those views, you know, so model coordination? What if I want to split out by level is one of the questions that I tend to get here. So I don't, I'm not interested in just this architectural file. I'm not interested in just this electrical file. What I want to have is certain aspects of the architectural model and maybe split out by level. This is something that goes back to, for instance, um, BIM uh, um, Navisworks. This is something that goes back to maybe equipment in BIM 360 Glue in the past. Uh, essentially, I want to slice and dice those models. Well, you can still do that. You know, what you can do is go into Revit and actually, because these are just filters on my views, right? So if I want to have just the one level, I can do so. I can create multiple views and I can publish them into this environment. And, you know, if I then want to see, okay, I just want to have, uh, let's say, architectural, see, this is filtering out. So if I was to say I've got multiple levels and I just type in level one here, I would get all the disciplines, electrical, architectural, MEP, et cetera, et cetera, of level one. So that's how we can clash this. And again, we could also filter here where we say, okay, uh, level one. Of course, I don't have that in the title or anything, so we won't see anything. But that's where this matrix would get uh, filtered out, actually. So that's uh, one aspect. Uh, so basically, it's down to uh, Revit to make sure that we have these set up. And this could be in a template, right? So no problem there. The other aspect is that with BIM 360 coordinate, people tend to ask me, what sort of clashes do you do there? Well, BIM 360 coordinate is quite frankly, hard clashes. So it's zero tolerance. It's really a face into a face of different elements. Uh, so essentially what we have here is sort of the very same workflow that we had in the past with BIM 360 Glue and Navisworks, where Glue is sort of your preliminary check, which you can do on a daily basis. And it doesn't mean that you need to get rid of Navisworks. Uh, Navisworks is still your um, high-end class detection tool. And the beauty is that these days, those two can be combined as well. So if I now go into Navisworks, you'll see I've got my empty environment here. Now, there is on the BIM 360 App Store, sorry, on the Navisworks uh, App Store, there is a BIM 360 coordinate uh, executable that you can run and basically you get this tab extra which essentially means that we can open models from BIM 360 coordination so we're going to go into EMEA uh, TS BIM 360 FY21 it immediately finds that coordination space and what I'll do is I'm just going to load all of these models here open and so what it does is it now looks into and remember we never ever generated an nwc file out of rivet or anything we're just looking at this master file now and it's loading those different views if you will and so those views they'll pop up in my selection tree and i can again slice and dice this any way i see fit inside of uh, navisworks so it's loading all those um all those different uh, aspects and again we're looking now at those very same elements that came from the shared environment from 
uh, BIM 360 design, if you will. Uh, so let's first make this a little bit nicer and let's do some horizon here. Uh, let's start walking for a second, and maybe uh, zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay. So. Okay, so we've got everything here, right? So if I just want to see in my selection tree, let's just activate that for a second. We've got all of our different models here, which is basically views, which came from uh, the shared environment from BIM 360 Design, as I mentioned. And so what we can do now is take it to the next level and say, okay, so we've got all these views. Remember that I had this issue, which was the clash between HVAC and that um, electrical uh, cable tray. So what I can do is I can go in here and say, manage those issues. And you'll see that it says there's a clash with a cable tray, which again, I can view here. So this is exactly the same thing as what we have inside of BIM 360. It has the same status. I could actually close it here or answer it or whatever. The attachment with the view is still there. You know, everything is there. Now we're looking at all of these different models. So we have that uh, functionality of Navisworks just at our, um, at our hands, right? So architectural, we want to get rid of it. Landscaping, let's get rid of it. Sanitary, let's get rid of it. Electrical HVAC, that was important for this clash, of course. And you know what? I want to keep structural in as well. So what I can do now is say, okay, so just basically hide those elements. There we go. And so what I can do now is have a proper look at this clash, which will show me the HVAC system, uh, sorry, the electrical system as well. Okay, so we've got all of this here so let's uh, let's uh, take it again to the next level and let's rerun those clashes but now from a navisworks point of view so what we're gonna do is let's just zoom out a little bit this is fine and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna open up my clash detective i'm gonna set up a test here let's just keep it as it is and i'm gonna clash let's say H hvac against electrical uh, that's fine. It's still a hard clash, but in this case, we could therefore fine tune it. Uh, let's say HVAC electrical. Yes, that's fine. Run the test. And what you'll see is that we have six clashes, which corresponds again to what we have inside of BIM 360 coordinate. All right. So we've got clash number one, clash number two. And interestingly enough, my duct here is the one that's causing the problem with the two um pendant lights here which corresponds exactly to what we've seen inside of bim 360 coordinate right so if i look at my two clashes here that's exactly the same problem and it has grouped them by the rectangular duct so again that advanced functionality that we have inside of navisworks is still there so if i say rectangular duct uh, group clashes involving this item you'll see that it now says this is a new group with two clashes which is this one and that one and again, if we now want to take it into the next level and say clash number four, this is really a problem, I could just go in here and say, you know what, I want to create an issue here, assign it to this point. It will pop up in BIM 360. We can look at the issue list, et cetera, et cetera. So a full-blown round-trip workflow between BIM 360 coordinates and Navisworks. Okay. Right, uh, last thing. So how does this then relate as a Navisworks file to BIM 360? Well, remember that we still have desktop connector. So if I go into my Windows Explorer, what you'll see is that we have BIM 360 here and we've got EMEA Technical Sales, uh, BIM 360 FY21, project files. So I could actually go in here through Navisworks and say, okay, I wanna save this as an NWF file, or I want to publish this as an NWD file and push this into BIM 360. So anyone around the globe that has access to that uh, folder inside of BIM 360 um, docs essentially has access to that same view, those same results. They can go into the issues. They can look at BIM 360 coordinate if they have access to BIM 360 coordinate. Otherwise, they'll look at it from a BIM 360 docs point of view. And so again, very flexible to tie all of this together. I showed very specifically a Revit workflow. Uh, um, I haven't looked at the questions just yet, but I'm imagining there might be a question around IFC. So yes, we can do the very same workflow with IFC files as well. 
Right, so that sort of concludes that first step, uh, which is BIM 360 coordinate and BIM 360, uh, sorry, and Navisworks. So let's go back to my PowerPoint here for a second. And I do wanna very briefly talk about Assemble here because I do get a lot of questions. What's the difference between Navisworks and Assemble? Uh, what can you do with Assemble? Why is Assemble there, et cetera, et cetera. So Assemble is very much a tool that sits within the planning stage just as BIM 360 coordinate and Navisworks is sitting there or are sitting there. And Assemble basically does a couple of things that it's quite unique at. It can validate um, information. Uh, so let's say that we move forward in design and we are adhering to LOD level of design or level of development. And at some point in time, fire rating needs to be added to a building for instance and we receive a file from the architect and we want to validate whether uh, all doors have fire rating attached to them um, so that's one of the aspects that we can very easily do inside of assemble verifying a model and if need be sending it back actually another aspect of assemble is that it can do a pretty um, uh, far-fetched um, quantification and indeed cost uh, if, we, if we choose to do so. So essentially it means that we've got our design models and through model conditioning, basically reporting on parameters on the Revit families, on the IFC models, on um, whatever can be uploaded in uh, Assemble, and I'll get to that in a second, we can sort of put legends on it and say, okay, what sort of categories do we have? We wanna filter this by level maybe, et cetera, et cetera. And essentially it means that we can enrich our BIM model with specific assemble uh, encoding, if you will, such as working location breakdown, quantity takeoff, estimation, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what we have here. So again, let's have a look at how this is working. So I've got my assemble open here and I've got a very specific project, which is uh, this one, IVT. And what you'll see is that again, we've uploaded those four very same models into uh, assemble here. So how do we do that? Very simple, from Revit, for instance, or from Navisworks, we've got this assemble tab, we just go publish, we point to the right project that we want to have this information in, and it's going to publish those files. So as I mentioned, this works for Revit, this works for AutoCAD, this works for Navisworks. So any file that you can get into Navisworks, we can also push into assemble. Okay, so IFC files, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And you know, the first thing is, again, same thing. So there is a bit of overlap with Navisworks. It just depends on what you want to use it for. So I could go in here and say, okay, I want to view this structural file. And this is going to represent that structural file in a little bit of a different way compared to how we see it in Navisworks. In this case, we have our inventory and we've got our model next to it. So our inventory is just a listing of all the objects, all the elements based upon a certain parameter or a combination of parameters. So in this case, it's just showing me all the different um, categories, you know. So you'll see that there's like three, six, nine, about 15 categories. What I can do is I can go into the model tree here and say, you know what, I don't wanna have just a structural file. Let's also have a look at the MEP file. So again, this is now gonna load those elements inside of my viewer and it's gonna enrich the inventory here. That's what we see here. Okay, so we now have Office MEP, Office structural, let's put in the existing buildings again. So that's the surroundings. There we go. And last but not least, the architectural model to get the hull of the whole thing. All right. And there we go. So pretty much the same thing as we have in Navisworks, right? We now have all those different elements here. So what we can do now is say, you know what, I want to have maybe other parameters here. So automatically it's telling me that I have 309 air terminals. I've got some analytical floors, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, those floors here, for instance, it's going to tell me that we have a certain area, certain volume, certain parameter. And what I can do now is I can actually say, okay, in this view, maybe I want to add columns. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit this add columns. And one of the parameters inside of assemble is the unit cost. 
and the total cost. Whoops, cost. Come on. Cost. Total cost. So what you see to the right here are the different columns, name, quantity, unit. So what I'll do is I've just added uh, total cost. There we go. Oh, I thought I had unit cost as well. I didn't, so I'm just gonna put that in as well. Unit cost, put that in here, done. And what you'll see now is that it's gonna get me the unit cost and total cost of everything. So essentially, what we're looking at here is a cost calculation um, aspect of assemble. Now, the question is again, how did I get cost in here? And it depends a little bit. So if I look at an air terminal, for instance, so I just select it. By the way, I can just go in here and say, change feasibility, hide others, and just focus on this air terminal. There we go. If I now take this one and zoom into it, there we go. That's my air terminal. I have ghost mode, so I can activate the rest. So I see where this thing is in context of the whole environment, right? Anyway, so what we have here now is what you'll see is, as I mentioned, we've got the parameters of Revit. So I've got my instance parameters, type parameters, but I also have assemble parameters. So this is something that I can configure. This is in the project settings. And you'll see that it says, for instance, barcode. So we can actually do uh, asset checking with this one. Uh, and there's my unit cost and total cost. Okay. And the way we count it, quantity, in this case, it's each, but maybe we have height, volume, width, et cetera, et cetera. So we can specify that. So very easy to set up, actually. Now, you might be wondering, wow, if I have to do that for all of my elements and specify the cost, et cetera, et cetera. So that's where the beauty of assemble comes in, because if I go back to my project here and I go into my project settings, then you'll notice that it says here, um, assemble property. So this is where we define our unit cost and what have you. So all of those different properties are in here, but also I have a data tree. And this is, for those of you who use it in Revit, this is exactly the uniformat file format. It doesn't necessarily have to be the uniformat file format. We can just, um, we can just uh, define this as we see fit. Uh, the beauty is we can set this up through an import export. This is just a text file, so we can export this. And guess what? It says here, export for Autodesk Revit or export assembly codes and unit costs to Microsoft Excel. So let's go back inside of my model here, and I'm gonna focus on the structural elements here. So if I select this element and I go in uh, edit type, then you'll see that from those Revit families, I've already attached an assembly code to the type, which essentially corresponds to additional settings, assembly code, view, this listing. So guess what? A structure, A10 foundations, A1010, etc., etc. It is indeed very much the same file as what we see here with one difference. In assemble, I attach unit cost and I do tell the system how to count for this. So strip footing, I want to have the area spread footings. I want to have the length. So this is very powerful because if we uh, apply a system to Revit, we use the same codes in assemble. We immediately have the cost. Okay. Um, and there's a lot more powerful stuff that we can do to this. So let's go back to our office structural file. And what we can do here is for instance, you know, I want to, view this not by category i want to view this by that uniformat code so let's just slice and dice this model according to uniformat code so change visibility height so i've just hidden one of those elements maybe now i want to hide the others so what we're looking at here is this uniformat code structural framing structural stiffness for instance all right so let's just activate everything again on height. There we go. Let's close this for a second. So I'm back into my overview. And you know, we can actually create these groupings. We can filter any which way we see fit for any file we can get in here. IFC, Navisworks, Revit, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go back to category here for a second. The other aspect is that if I look at this, 
and we've got all of our elements, right? I can now say, okay, maybe I want to color this by a certain property. So let's say uh, we're looking at this from a category point of view. Maybe I want to look at this from a level point of view. So let's just take our level here and it's now going to tell me that there are some elements here on um, entry level, floor two, floor three. And there's also a couple of elements not assigned. And that's quite interesting because maybe, and that's validation, right? Maybe I do want to have them assigned to a certain level. Um, and maybe this is something that's just quite simply wrong. So what I can do is I can go in here and I can apply rules to my elements. I can say, you know what, uh, give me again the level, uh, show only the level with a blank which is not assigned right so update let's see in our inventory what we have ah uh, it tells me analytical floors walls conditions reinforcement so this kind of makes sense this is something that we don't need actually okay so what i can do now is just reverse this and i can say hide all of those blanks update and it's going to bring me back the structural model but this time without the blanks so that's what we see here and we can continue to slice and dice this, you know? So I can say, you know what? I want with another property, which is maybe the category, category, category name. I just wanna see floors, you know? There we go, update. Uh, hide all, that's of course wrong because what I wanna do is with uh no let's say that i want to have uh, add a model rule show only the floors that's going to be better there we go update there we go so we now have only those floors uh and again uh, if i want to split it uh, and show only the entry level and floor number two that's fine as well right um the other cool thing is that if we look at the website of assemble then you'll see that we obviously have those add-ins. We also have this Excel add-in, and we also have a Power BI add-in. So what we can do here is say, you know what, for this element, for instance, all of the elements that I have here, they have what we call a waste calculation, which is empty. So the cool thing is that we can use an integration with Excel, which you see here. And what I've done is I've configured my Excel connection to point to assemble, to point to my project, to point to a certain view, which says waste calculation. I can actually show that inside of uh, my view here. So if I go back, I uh, leave without saving. Here's my waste calculation. And essentially, this is what I'm going to calculate my waste on. Okay, so these elements. Okay, so I've specified what I want to pull from assemble. And the only thing I need to do now is run this report. The interesting bit is that it's going to tell me the different Revit IDs, the categories, the cost that I pulled from Revit itself, for instance, through the um, uniformat code. The one thing I do want to specify here is that this waste is quite a, spe a specific one because if you look at this, it says this is an update property, waste calculation. So what I can now do is say this equals 0 0.1 times that one. There we go. And I can now say, okay, I want to paste this. There we go. And I want to update, assemble, continue. There we go. So if I go into assemble now, just refresh one time. And I look at my, whatever, this one, property, waste calculation, now says 235.2, see? Uh, and we can take it to the next level, and that's the last part of the story here today, which is Power BI. So Power BI, uh, essentially what you download here from the website is um, a template file. And so what we can do here is we can actually have a look at my model. So you'll see that we have those very same elements here. And I can look at variance, for instance. So because we have cost, I can now say, you know what? I wanna have my structural model. I wanna have 
my version 17 versus this other one and it's going to tell me that there is a difference of three elements which is a total cost in difference of so much so the last thing i want to show here is if i go to my structural model i can actually show my changes here between version 17 and that very same model that we had in the past and it's telling me now that structural foundation, pile cap, and steel pipe is what's added. And those are indeed three elements, one, two, three, and that's what's gonna give us that uh, result. So it's still showing that. Let me just briefly refresh that again. Okay, show changes, 17 versus 10, update. Essentially, it's going to point to, because these have been added, so you see the color code, so added three elements. So between those two versions, we will have an extra foundation that's in there. Uh, the beauty is, while this is still thinking about it, I can go into my col my columns, total cost, unit cost, done. And what you'll see is that that difference in cost is 7,000, et cetera, et cetera, which corresponds to what we have in Power BI. We can then publish this file. This is going to give us a URL, which guess what? And that's full circle now. If I go back in BIM 360, I go into my project home. I have the very same information here. All right. So that's how this whole thing works before we actually put uh, one brick on the on the ground before we actually start uh, building this so that's uh, that's what i have for you today guys that's uh, that's all i have so we have a couple minutes for q a um, before we do that i do want to point to the next webinar which is in two weeks time this is where i'll talk about how we move from an existing environment to bim 360. we've seen the whole portfolio of bim 360 now and even uh, and then some, if you will, like uh, assemble. But how do you get your existing information into BIM 360? That's really what the next uh, session is going to be all about. And with that, Jonas, you want to yes, drive that, the next part? Lot. Yeah, can you hear me, Yves? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah great. So we have uh, lots lots of questions here, but I bring will bring up probably that will the most part of the audience will uh, let's say get some answer on so so you, you mentioned during the during the this webinar but but uh, one question was uh, can we just clash revit files yes of course yeah absolutely uh if you have uh, multiple maybe Re you misunderstood can we just clash revit files and probably the, the answer is no right so we can clash lots of other files um no, I mean, if you have multiple Revit files, you can still clash them against one another. It depends on what you put into the coordination space. So, yes, absolutely. You can just clash Revit files. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But you also can clash IFC models and so forth, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It depends on what you deliver to the system. If it's just Revit files, then it's just going to do clashing between different Revit files. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And yeah. then I got uh, several questions because you're showing how, how to clash discipline against each other. Mm -hmm. But how how about clash in the same discipline, for example, yes. mechanical versus mechanical? Yeah, so that's uh, that's possible as well. It it quite simply depends on how you set up your views inside of Revit. So if I have one view which is HVAC and I have another view which is electrical, then I can just clash those two and I just upload those files into or those views into BIM 360. So that's uh, that's absolutely possible. It's coming back to my first statement there that we can have an aggregated model to clash between disciplines, but we can also have a separate coordination space, which is just quite simply a separate folder in which we define views for just the MEP stuff, for instance, and that'll get clashed against one another. And actually, if you then bring it to that aggregated view the others won't even see what you've done before that because it's all security and role based uh, role uh, uh, privileges uh, driven so yeah 
perfect. And then about reporting the, the clashes. Mm -hmm. uh, one question: can, can we can we create the PDF of the matrix, or can you explain a little bit about the reporting in BIM 360? Yeah, so the matrix isn't something we can export other than um, other than actually uh, take a screenshot of it. Let me just verify that actually. But uh, that's the wrong one. Let's go in here. So if I go into uh, BIM 360 model coordination and I go onto my clashes, then what you'll see is this one, right? So that's what we have here. So um, you'd, you'd have to take a screenshot of this. That's what we would have, yeah. Yeah, but addition to that, BIM 36 to have a lot of good reporting form, for example, to to uh, do the issues reporting with, let's say, the specific yeah, yeah, view absolutely. of the clashes. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. That's, uh, that was indeed the next uh, aspect of it. So if we go in here, those issues, uh, so first of all, uh, come on, issues. Issues, there we go. So we can, first of all, filter on uh, different aspects and then just export this as a PDF or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Great. And and another question is, uh, for example, when you're using Navisworks data set in BIM 360, can the Navis work selection set and viewpoint be accessed and used? Yep. So um, all the different views that you have in Navisworks, they pop up as views in BIM 360 docs and as a as a view. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great. Great. So we are top or even above of the hour. So. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, finish this webinar. But uh, before I mentioned that this webinar is recorded so you can if you see in this uh, link uh, when what uh, Eve's just showing right now you can see the 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 early ones it's recorded so you can look on this and this uh, webinar will probably be published from yeah very soon one day or two days uh, and also when now when we finish this uh, webinar you will get the survey on your screen and please fulfill that survey because we need to know how we can, if and how we can improve this kind of webinars. Yeah. And and then I said thank you all attendees and also thank you Eves for a very great presentation. Thank My you, pleasure. Everyone. All right. See you soon. Bye guys.